You hear this, my friends? Hear that? It's the sound of my heart breaking. And yours will too if you read this book. It's a, it's a sad state of affairs, but you got to be able to deal with the reality as it is, not when, how you want it to be. So let me show you what I'm talking about. It's called The House of Rockefeller by my man Morris Beale, uh, published I think in 1955 or something like that. Let's see. Um, I can't remember. But 19, the 1950s. Uh, Morris Beale, How a Shoestring Was Run into a billion, $200 billion in Two Generations. And, uh, it's just a devastating take on the House of Rockefeller, and uh, it's it's sad, man, because you think we're run by, you know, American industrialists who have America's interests. At, it, we're not. You think we're run by politicians who have America's interests. No, we're not. We're not. It's completely a takeover by big corporations who finance the government, and we are dealing in a fascist state, and we have been for years. In fact, it's funny. I read this right here, you know, a few months ago. I've talked about it. I actually interviewed my man, Phil Lee, uh, Southern Reconstruction. I recognize even then uh, the uh, the railroad industry had, had taken over the American government back in the 1800s. And then the Rockefeller had taken over the American government in the 1900s. And uh, now who knows what it is. It's, I mean, it's all the same tentacles, man. It's nuts. We are not run. Your vote doesn't matter. Let's just put it that way. And the reason I say that is because when you start reading this, you realize Truman... Eisenhower, Grant, Lincoln, who's the other guy, uh, uh, Rutherford, whatever the hell, it doesn't matter, man. They're all controlled by the same uh, lobbyists, the same industrialists, and uh, they run they run things. There's no other way around that. And your heart will break because you thought America is the land of the free, home of the brave. We're not, man. I mean, our citizens are freaking great. Well, so are Chinese citizens. So are Russian citizens. The citizenry is wonderful. They don't want to kill you. They hate you. They're just like, I'm just trying to raise my family, put food on the table. It's our governments that are, are ruinous. And the American government includes in that. And all their, oh, America, you realize it's all one big scam, perpetuated by wealthy industrialists who control everything. And I'm going to read you just real quick about a guy that you're sitting there thinking, how could it I just. So when you read this book, you will break your heart. It's a 296 pages. I'm only on page 74. And the reason it takes long is I got re I got to research. I said, damn, man, Morris is right. Morris is right. So let me uh, just share with you real quick. Um, we're going to go to uh, page 74 on this book. Go to. And uh, and when you start, I think I got to go to 78 actually here. Yeah. All right. We're just going to read you now. It's just and it's, it's full, chock full of this stuff that you never learned. You will never learn. They'll say Morris Beale is a conspiracy theorist. You're like, oh man, I don't want to read a conspiracy theorist. I don't want to be one of those guys. So this is written in the mid 50s. The present head of Chase Bank, John J. McCoy, has been a Rockefeller man for years. He represented the House of Rockefeller in Germany, courtesy of the Truman and Eisenhower administrations, when the loot was distributed. He is now the most influential director of AT&T, MetLife, Westinghouse, United Fruit, blah, 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 blah. All right. So I'm sitting there thinking, who the hell is John J. McCoy? I never heard of this guy. So I started doing I started doing some research to look him up. And what do I find? This old John J. What a great guy. All right. So the background of John J. was his mom was, a, his dad died young in Philadelphia. His mom was a hairdresser. Uh, so John J. is poor, but he was able, but his mom had wealthy clientele for hairdressing. And so John Jay was able to kind of go into this. There used to be a movie with like Andrew McCarthy or something like that, or one of those guys from the 80s where he was a poor guy by University of Virginia Law School, and he was able to manipulate his way into the, uh, the wealthy elite. Same thing with this guy right here. In fact, he changed his name from John Snyder McCoy to John J. McCoy to sound more is aristotic, aristocratic, excuse me. And, uh, and it was just like a poor boy. But he's able to manipulate his way into the higher realms of wealthy clientele. Uh, it's, it's actually it's incredibly interesting. He wasn't a great student. He was an average student, nothing fancy, not a smart guy. But he was able to con uh, just it's, it's he was able to kiss ass, just like Fauci. Fauci's not a smart guy. I mean, he's not dumb, but he's not smart. McCoy isn't dumb, but he's not smart. He's just a regular dude. But yet his words, his way, but he's able to make people feel like yes, oh, I love that guy. So check this crazy man. So check this out. So you're wondering, well, what, what, huh? What the assistant secretary of war under Henry Stimson, even though he was a, a staunch conservative Republican. And then he, he was an advisor to all presidents from FDR to Ronald Reagan. Ah, 
Let's see. After the war, he served as president of the World Bank, U.S. High Commissioner for Germany, chairman of the Chase Manhattan Bank, chairman of the Council of Foreign Relations, a member of the War Commission. Ah, interesting. Uh, he was uh, marked as one of the wise men, a group of statesmen, marked by nonpartisanship, pragmatic internationalism, and aversion to ideolo ideological fervor. Yeah, ideological from a political perspective, but not they were certainly ideological when it came to supporting the House of Rockefeller and everything those guys had. The Rockefeller Foundation. So who founded the House of Ro the Council for Foreign Relations? Oh, the Rockefeller Foundation. Isn't that interesting? Uh, the World Bank. Uh, Chase Manhattan Bank was an owned and operated by the Rockefellers. They're very active in the World Bank because they, the Chase Manhattan Bank did all the lending to the U.S. government, who then turned around and lent to the World Bank. So basically, they had our tentacles, and the whole world is crazy. But I want to share with you something. He did oppose the atomic bombings at Hiroshima and Nagasaki, and you're going to realize here. Let's go down here. We're going to see World War II. All right. Um, I want to show you something here. Uh, he, he, uh, uh, let's see, more than any other individual, McCoy was responsible for the decision to intern Japanese Americans. He wanted the Japanese Americans interned because of the sabotage he's worried about them making. All right, but when it came to uh, uh, right here, ending war with Japan, but McCoy tried to convince Truman not to invade Japan and not to bomb Hiroshima because he says, look, we have through communications through something called the magic intercepts that the Japanese emperor was be trying to wind down. And was even asking the USSR to broker a peace treaty with the U.S. and Japan. As such, he advised Truman to offer terms to the surrender of Japan. But Truman said, no, we're going to go ahead and bomb Nagasaki and Hiroshima anyway. And I was always taught that if we didn't bomb Nagasaki and Hiroshima, uh, thousands of American men would have died in the invasion. And they probably would have, but if we could have just, we could have had the Japanese retreat any, or surrender anyway. We had the intercepts that they were ready to because they, a Russian had like a million Russian soldiers at Manchuria or something like that where they were getting ready to invade anyway. And Japan says, we don't have the base. We, don't, we can't withstand these guys. So we bombed anyway. All right, interesting though. So check this out. But who is old? Uh, what did uh, my man do here? Oh, he undertook much lawyering for corporations in Nazi Germany in the 30s and advised a major German chemical combine, IG Farben, which manufactured Zyklon B. Huh. By the time uh, McCoy left uh, lawyering work to work for the government, he was uh, earning about 835000 a year in today's dollars and had a savings. Now, he's only like in his 30s maybe a little early 40s, he had savings of $2 million already. Ah, he was working for corporations in Nazi Germany. Isn't that interesting? Kind of crazy, huh? He worked with, in his lawyering firm, he worked with many wealthy clients. Hmm, interesting. So you're like, well, how, how did he, how, how did all this transpire? Because he's just a poor boy. How did he get his way into some of these places? So we're going to go over here. Hold on just a second. Um, from 1954 to 1970, he was chairman of the prestigious CFR. Remember, he's also Chase Bank president. Chase Bank president was owned and operated by the Rockefellers. Who funded the CFR? The Rockefellers. Uh, and he was succeeded on the Council for Foreign Relations by David Rockefeller, who he had worked closely with him at Chase Bank. He had a long association with the Rockefeller family, going back to his early days at Harvard, where he taught the young Rockefellers how to sail. So I'm sure he learned how to sail by what? By hanging out with the rich elite that his mom was a hairdresser for. He said, I got to be like that. I'm going to change my name to sound more arist aristocratic. And I'm going to, once I meet uh, Rockefellers at Harvard, I'm going to teach him how to sail. And then I'm going to be part of the Rockefeller house without question. All right. He later served Kennedy, Nixon, Carter, and Reagan. All right. He's the honorary chairman of the, okay, whatever. So I want to show you something else here, though. This is crazy. This is freaking crazy. Hold on a second. Remember, the Nazis lost, supposedly. Uh, Nuremberg judge William Wilkins wrote, Imagine my surprise one day in February of 1951 to read in the newspaper that John J. McCoy, the high commissioner to Germany, had restored all of the Krupp properties and been, and that had been ordered confiscated. So you're like, what, 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 what is all that about? So let's take a look, shall we? 
On September 2nd, 1949, McCloy replaced the previous five successive military governors for the U.S. zone in Germany as a high the first high commissioner for Germany. And he held that position for the next three years. He oversaw the further creation of the Federal Republic of Germany. All right. At the strong urging of the German government, he approved recommendations for pardoning and commutation of sentences of Nazi criminals, including those of the prominent industrialists Frederick Flick, Alfred Krupp, I guess, and Commander Martin Sandberger. He also granted the restitution of Krupp's and Flick's entire property. He pardoned Ernest somebody, as well as Joseph Dietrich and Joaquin Pieper, convicted of mass murders for the role of the Mount Medi Massacre. Another pardon recipient was Edmund somebody. Huh. Some of the less notable figures were retried and convicted by the government of the newly independent uh, West Germany. Yeah, the Nazis lost. All right. So we have a Nazi sympathizer who worked for the Nazi governor, go uh, government essentially on behalf of the corporations, making bank, became the high commissioner, pardoned and rep repatriated their assets to the, who were convicted of mass murder. But the German government was able to get the low-hanging fruit. Ah, that's great. Uh, let's see. He supported the initiative of something uh, uh, for the Un Ohm School of Design, which is considered to be the most influential design school in the world after the Bajas. The founder sought and received support in the U.S. and with an American high command in Germany. And McCoy saw the endeavor as project number one and supported a college and campus combination along U.S. examples. And they received a check from McCoy, I'm sure via the U.S., of a million Deutschmarks. You think he doesn't have some pull there? Uh, he served as U.S. Uh, high commissioner. His final, and then he was terminated in 1955 when they terminated the office. And then he went on to be the chairman of Chase Bank from 1953 to 1960. And then he went to the CFR, the Council for Foreign Relations. Your vote mattered. Did you know almost 50% of the uh, the advisors to Eisenhower, uh -uh, to uh, Kennedy, to Johnson, to Nixon, hey, we're from the CFR, Council for Foreign Relations. Who controlled the CFR? The Rockefellers. Who controlled Chase Bank? The Rockefellers. Who controlled World Bank? The Rockefellers. It's, uh... I, anyway, it'll break your heart, man. And I'm not done reading. I'm only about a third, hell, probably, yeah, about a third, no, a half, about a half way, a, a quarter of the way through. Look, point being is there's nothing you can do. You just read and you say, man, but don't send your kids to fight a war that is going to benefit the Rockefellers. How many people died in Korea? How many people died in Vietnam? How many people died in World War II? Oh, by the way, I'm going to get my dog a sec. John J. McCoy uh, opposed bombing of the train tracks going into Auschwitz, where Nazi-held prisoners were. He opposed that. Why? He said they'll take away war efforts from other areas. So how many people, again, died because of his actions, this guy? Now, thankfully, he opposed the Hiroshima and Nagasaki bombings, but he did propose, a turn, not propose, the biggest advocate uh, interning Japanese Americans. So the Nazis mass murders, 100%. He pardoned them. And were we not also in Dresden and other things mass murders? Yeah, not you and I. Certainly not the, the freaking 11 Bravo infantrymen, but the people in charge. And it doesn't matter who you vote for. They're still running the show, and they still are today, man. And nothing's ever going to come from it. Like the thing with Hillary spying on Trump, nothing's going to come from that. Because the people in charge are the people in control, and they don't care. They're just like, all right, Hillary's hand, whatever. But yeah, they're gonna go after freaking what's his name, the uh, uh, the general uh, who served for Trump. I forgot his name off the top of my head. Yeah, depressing. But don't be depressed. Just recognize it's so above you. There's nothing you can do about it. Can't vote harder. You just sit there and say, man, it's crazy, and just get on your knees and pray to God. That's all you can do. All right. Love your thoughts. We'll see you.